One of the biggest mistakes we make as tennis players is when we miss a shot, the first place we're always looking at is our racket and we're thinking about our technique. And what we really need to be looking at the next time you miss a ball is I want you to look at your feet first. And it's just not as simple as telling yourself to move your feet. There's footwork technique. And that's why I'm bringing in today for today's video, TennisCon All-Star, former top 100 ATP player and one of the best online instructors in the world, in my opinion, Jeff Saldenstein. And he's got five tips to help you master your footwork. We're bringing them in because I'm highlighting over the next month. Now, Jeff is part of our TennisCon event. He's actually going to be bringing you this year uh, footwork and follow-throughs that the ATP pros are using to move and hit more efficiently so you're going to enjoy this video this video actually was from his channel make sure you check out tennis evolution his YouTube channel his website this video got 95,000 views and a ton of likes and I thought this would be a great video to share with everybody because everybody's always thinking about their technique their strokes you got to look at your feet first so Jeff take it away what would it look like if you could start to master your footwork? Hi, my name is Jeff Salzenstein, founder of Tennis Evolution, former top 100 ATP pro, and I want to help you get more clear on how you can improve your footwork so you can move around the court more efficiently and more effortlessly. And in today's video, I'm going to give you five steps, five steps to help you with your footwork. Step number one is the split step. And there's a lot of misunderstanding, a lot of misconceptions around the split step. I want to give you one tip around it today. So the idea, and I see a lot of problem players making this mistake, the idea is to actually be in the air when your opponent strikes the ball. A lot of players think that they should be on the ground when their opponent makes contact. But you actually want to initiate the split step early before they make contact, so you're in the air when contact is made. So when you're in the air and they make contact, then you can push off in any direction. The ball has already been struck when you're in the air. You wanna be coming down, the ball hits the ground, sorry, the feet hit the ground, the ball's already left the racket so that you can move in either direction. There's a timing to this. Most players are too late with their split step. They're actually on the ground when the ball is being struck and the reaction time is slower. That's step number one. I want you to focus on that. Step number two to improve your footwork is I want you to have a wide base. A lot of players are very narrow when they come out of their split. So I wanna make sure that you're, you're in a wide base, you're in a strong base where the feet, okay, the feet are outside the shoulders. So you wanna make sure that you're in a wide base when you're playing, when you come out of the split. You also wanna be in a wide base when you get out wide for balls. So if I move out wide here, I see a lot of players finish and their feet are about this wide. We need to get this foot outside of this shoulder so that we can push off and get ready for the next, uh, next shot. Again, common patterns that I've seen with this wide base is that almost everyone is too narrow. So one reason players are too narrow is because they're not aware of how their body should feel. They're not aware that she, they should have these feet outside the shoulders, okay, on many occasions. Yes, there's a time to step in and be upright, and I teach that, but when you're playing in a dynamic fashion, you want to get into that wider base, and the only way you can do that is if you have strong legs. So make sure that you're doing the appropriate strength exercises for your legs and your lower body. A lot of single leg stuff would really help you a lot. Single leg squats, Bulgarian squats, any type of squats where you're practicing being wider with your feet outside the shoulders, okay? That's step number two, okay? Step number three to help you with your footwork is to take bigger steps. And I know I'm probably gonna take some heat for this one for all the coaches out there that say take little steps to the ball, but I'm sorry, I'm not seeing that with the pros been studying the game for a long time. I've watched a lot of video footage. I've, I've worked with pros. I've seen them move and I've practiced it on myself. And yes, there's a time and a place to make little adjustment steps, but I think more players need to practice taking bigger steps. And the way to do that is to have a strong first move. So an example that I can give you of taking bigger steps, and this relates usually with balls where you're moving out wide 
is that when you come out of the split step, assuming in your you're in a wide base, look, I'm in a wide base, I can really drive and make a strong first move to the ball. A lot of players come out of their split and then they take little steps to get out to the ball. And that takes too much time, especially when the ball is coming faster and faster. If, as you keep ascending and going to the next level with your game, you're going to have to learn how to take these bigger strides, strides that have more rhythm to them. So when I come out of the split, I take a big first move. I take it, make a big step, okay? So I cross over and then the next step is pretty big. So you can see and if I move at a good clip here, watch me move out of the split. I split, I'm able to get to the single sideline with two big steps. Watch this again. I come out of the split, one, two, and then I hit the ball and I shuffle. A lot of players, they come out of the split and they try to do this to get to the ball and that takes too much time and there isn't enough rhythm behind it. So these bigger steps are huge and it usually starts with the first move. If I have to move up to a ball and I come out of the split, I wanna take a bigger step. It's this, it's this little step at the beginning that really slows momentum down. It's taking little adjustment steps at the end of the shot that throws your rhythm off. If you study the top pros, Djokovic, Federer, Nadal, they are taking bigger steps to get to the ball. Yes, if the ball is close, okay, there are little adjustment steps to be made. And I teach that and I believe in that, but not enough emphasis is being, uh, being uh, mentioned or focused on with taking these bigger steps to cover more ground, whether you're running straight ahead, diagonal, even if I have to drop and go back, a little drop step in a big crossover allows me to cover a lot of ground. When people are moving back, a lot of times they just turn and they do this stuff. So we have to learn how to take those bigger strides, okay, those bigger steps, that bigger first move. Now, that's step number three. Step number four to improve your footwork is shadow strokes and shadow footwork. When I was in my late 20s, I lived in California in Palm Springs, and a lot of times it was 120 degrees out, no one would play with me. So I went out to a public park, very similar to this, we're at a public park right now, and I would just work on my shadow strokes and my footwork. And so I would move around the court and I would just repeat a pattern like this every time. And I would just work on it. I'd come up, square up, I'd drop back, I'd go here. And you can see there's a rhythm to my movement. I'd come here on my backhand, boom. All right, a little shuffle step and then I step in, boom. All right, then I cross over and then I square up, boom, all right? So I would play with one, two, three shot combos. Maybe I run up for a low ball here, boom. All right, I'd come to the net and I'd knock off some volleys. But I was very precise with my footwork. I had studied the pros, I had seen how they moved, and that helped me develop the footwork system that I teach at Tennis Evolution. So if you've been struggling with your footwork and so many coaches are telling you, hey, just move your feet, well, I'm gonna show you how to move your feet. I'm gonna give you the breakdown. I'm gonna give you the attention to detail, the specifics, how to move on the baseline, how to transition forward, how to move at the net, how to serve and recover, how to use your footwork on return to serve. I've studied all of it, and a lot of it starts with shadow strokes. No one spends a ta enough time with the shadow strokes. I shouldn't say no one. Very few people spend enough time on the shadow strokes and the footwork. Very few people spend time studying video and then going out and trying to model that footwork. I've done both. I've, I've done the shadow footwork and I've also studied the videos. So that's st step number four, is to practice your shadow strokes and your footwork with the pr precise footwork. Hopefully you're studying the footwork that I teach over at Tennis Evolution. Step number five, and this one's an interesting one. And again, probably some disagreement out there, but that's okay. We're all open to different opinions. You just need to go out on the court and see what works for you. And this step number five has to do with rhythm and getting arriving at the appropriate time. I believe that we should arrive at the appropriate time depending on the speed of the ball. So if the ball is coming really fast, then I need to move fast to get there. But if the ball is coming slow, I don't feel that you should move really fast to get over there and wait and slow all of your momentum down. I think you should move to the rhythm of the ball. So 
if the ball comes really fast, okay, I'm gonna get there. I'm gonna get there really quickly, right? Okay, I'm gonna get there. If the ball is slower, okay, slower, I wait, and then I arrive at the correct time to be able to load and 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 rotate into the shot. But if I if I if I'm dealing with a slow ball and I get over there really fast, which I see a lot, and then I have to wait, and then I swing, then there could be some issues with rhythm, rhythm, timing, and tempo. I'm all about rhythm, timing, and tempo with movement and even with the swinging of the racket, okay? So see if you can practice moving quickly when the ball comes quick and moving more deliberately, maybe even slower in rhythm, and arrive, load this leg at the right time right before you're supposed to accelerate and hit the ball, okay? Very, very important to try to get the rhythm and the timing and the tempo down with the movement. So those are the five steps. I've gone over them, I've gone over the split step, the timing of the split step. I've gone over making sure you have a wide base. I've covered taking bigger steps or strides or making a bigger first move. I've talked about shadow footwork. And finally, I've talked about rhythm and arriving at the right time. Those are five powerful keys, five powerful steps that can help your tennis footwork. I'm here to help you guys. I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. Give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, tell your friends about it, and maybe more importantly, click the description link below to get more free tips from us, from Tennis Evolution, where we're committed to helping passionate players all over the world, those committed players that wanna to go to the next level, that wanna take deliberate, inspired action. I want you to subscribe to Tennis Evolution. Go over to the blog, check out the tips, Somewhere in this video, you're going to see uh, links that you can click on, videos you can click on to get more information, to get more free tips. Click that link in the description below. Thanks again for your time today. I love your patience for tuning into this entire video where you're going to study this and now get out and improve your footwork. Thanks so much. We'll see you at the next one. All right, like I said, that was a great video by Jeff, and we're getting ready. We're gearing up for Tennis Con 3. Now, what Tennis Con 3 is, is we feature the best coaches on the planet, and this year's theme is Breaking Bad. Now, I love Jesse, I love Walt, but that's not what this year is about. It's about breaking your bad habits. So there's a chance that when you're losing your matches, you might be thinking it's due to you know getting up there in age, but I think it's more about the bad habits you've developed over the years that maybe you got away with when you were a little younger, but now you've got to really develop and clean up your habits. So we're bringing in great coaches like Jeff Saldenstein, like Rick Macy, like Gigi Fernandez, like Fuzzy O'Ball's online tennis instruction, etc. Essential Tennis, over 30 world-renowned coaches, and their mission is to help you break your bad habits. Now, we don't have a free ticket yet, but you're gonna be able to get a free ticket in October. We're gonna be launching this October 20th, and we're gonna give you an opportunity to get a free ticket. But what you can do right now, so you get notified, and you can get access to the free tickets, is you can get on my email list. I'm gonna give you a free eight-part training on the five big rocks of tennis. So make sure you sign up here, get inside that free train. That way, you'll get yourself a free ticket get to tennis con when, it become, when they become available and also make sure again check out Jeff Saldenstein tennis evolution he's an awesome coach I know you're gonna learn a lot from him I'm so happy and proud that he's coming back for tennis con 3